Embankment and breakwater construction projects around the world are essential for protecting coastal areas from powerful sea storms, erosion, and other environmental threats. These projects involve the use of advanced technologies and materials to create structures that can withstand the forces of nature while offering durability and stability for the long term. In this video, we explored the fascinating construction process behind the Acropods Dam in Cerbère, France, which showcases the use of next-generation concrete blocks and innovative techniques to ensure the success of the project. Let's dive deeper into the construction of breakwaters and embankments, particularly focusing on the production and installation of wave-dissipating blocks like acropods and tetrapods, and the various processes involved in building these massive coastal defense structures. Coastal protection structures like breakwaters, embankments, and seawalls are vital for safeguarding towns and cities located near the coast. These structures mitigate the impact of waves, reduce erosion, and protect against flooding during storms. One of the primary methods of constructing these structures involves the use of specialized concrete blocks such as acropods and tetrapods. These blocks are designed to absorb and dissipate the energy of waves, making them highly effective in maintaining the integrity of coastal defenses. The Acropods Dam in Cerbère, France, is a key example of how modern coastal engineering projects have evolved. The dam was built to protect the town from sea storms while offering a solution to environmental challenges. The acropods used in the project are the latest generation, with designs that allow for easier and faster installation compared to earlier versions. This makes the Cerber project a pioneering endeavor, as it's the first time these new acropods were manufactured and installed in France. The construction of the acropods dam in Cerber started with a detailed design plan, focusing on the use of concrete blocks that could handle the harsh marine environment. The acropods were produced using advanced manufacturing techniques to ensure their durability. The construction process involved the collection of scattered rocks and materials from the sea, which were then sorted by size and reintegrated into the dam's structure. Terrestrial and maritime rock excavation techniques were used to anchor the acropods and the dam to the seabed, with anchoring depths ranging from 2 to 8 meters. This stage of construction took around two months to complete. At the prefabrication site, Concrete production was in full swing, with a plant producing 150 cubic meters of concrete per day. Approximately 15 to 20 workers were involved in the prefabrication of the acropods, each weighing 5 tons and measuring about 3 meters in height and width. After the concrete reached the required hardness, the acropods were demolded and transported to the dam site. These blocks underwent a drying period of 21 days before being placed into the structure. A powerful 200-ton crane with GPS guidance technology was used to lift and position the acropods. The GPS system was crucial in ensuring the precise placement of the blocks, and divers played an essential role in assisting the crane operators during the installation process. The majority of materials used in the dam's construction, such as rocks and aggregates, were sourced from the remnants of the old dam. However, additional supplies were obtained from nearby quarries to meet the project's needs. In total, approximately 32,000 cubic meters of rock were dredged and placed, and over 70,000 acropods and 400 grooved cubic blocks were used during the construction. Another critical element in coastal defense is the use of tetrapods, wave-dissipating concrete blocks with a distinctive shape designed to break up waves and reduce their impact. The production of tetrapods follows a multi-step process to ensure their structural integrity and effectiveness in dissipating wave energy. Assembly of shape-forming pieces. The process begins with assembling the three shape-forming pieces that create the mold for the tetrapod. These pieces are brought together in a specific configuration to give the tetrapod its unique shape. Pouring concrete mix. Once the mold is ready, a concrete mix is prepared according to the required specifications. The mix usually consists of cement, sand, gravel, water, and sometimes additives to improve the strength of the final product. This mix is poured into the mold, ensuring that it fills every corner. Compaction with vibrator. To ensure the concrete mix fills the mold uniformly, a vibrator is used to compact the mixture. This process eliminates any air pockets or voids, which could weaken the tetrapod. The compaction process is critical for ensuring the block's density and overall strength. Curing and demolding. After the concrete is compacted, the tetrapods are left to cure and harden. This curing process is vital for developing the tetrapod's strength and durability. Depending on the concrete mix and environmental conditions, curing can take several days or weeks. Once the blocks are fully cured, 
they are carefully demolded and inspected for any defects. Quality control and finishing. Each tetrapod undergoes a thorough inspection to ensure it meets quality standards. Any defects are corrected, and additional finishing treatments, such as sandblasting, are applied to improve the tetrapod's resistance to erosion. These tetrapods, once complete, are transported to the construction site and positioned on the breakwater or embankment, where they act as a barrier against the waves, dissipating their energy and protecting the shoreline. The construction and transportation of 22 massive concrete caissons for the port of Aberdeen is a remarkable engineering feat, showcasing the meticulous planning, advanced construction techniques, and collaboration between various ports and engineering teams. These caissons, each measuring up to 51 meters in length, 15 meters in width, and 16 meters in height, are integral to the expansion of the port of Aberdeen. Their construction took place at the port of Acarunia's outer harbor in Punta Langostera, an ideal location chosen for its favorable conditions, deep drafts, and expertise in complex marine construction projects. The entire process, from formwork installation to transportation, required exceptional precision and coordination. Below, we explore the key aspects of this ambitious project. The outer harbor of Acarunia, specifically the area of Punta Langostera, was selected as the construction site for the caissons due to several critical factors. Punta Langostera offers deep drafts, spacious areas for large-scale operations, and a wealth of experience in marine construction. These characteristics made it the perfect location for the creation of the massive caissons required for the Port of Aberdeen expansion. For nearly a year, the Punta Langostera site was transformed into a bustling hub of activity. Engineers, construction workers, and specialized maritime experts worked together to manufacture the caissons. This project generated over 100 jobs in the area, boosting the local economy and providing valuable work experience in high-tech marine construction. The construction of the caissons followed a highly structured and efficient process. Each cycle of production lasted seven days, during which two caissons were built. The cycle began with the insertion of a barge with a metal structure into the caisson, allowing for the installation of the formwork. Once the formwork was in place, the concreting process began. The concrete for the caissons was continuously supplied, ensuring that the construction could proceed without interruptions. In addition to the concrete work, the assembly of iron reinforcements was a crucial step. These reinforcements ensured the strength and durability of the caissons, enabling them to withstand the harsh marine environment they would face once installed at the port of Aberdeen. To produce the caissons, a dedicated concrete plant was set up at the site. This plant worked around the clock, producing the high-quality concrete needed for the caissons. On average, the plant produced 150 cubic meters of concrete per day, contributing to the seamless flow of construction. Each caisson underwent rigorous quality control inspections throughout the process, ensuring that every structure met the required specifications. These inspections were essential to maintain the integrity of the caissons, which were designed to support the expansion of the port and protect it from marine conditions. One of the most innovative aspects of the caisson construction was their ability to float. Despite their massive size and weight, the caissons were designed with a hollow, box-like structure that allowed them to float on water. This floating capability was essential for their transportation from Punta Langostera to the port of Aberdeen, a journey of approximately 2,000 kilometers. Once a caisson was fully constructed and inspected, it was moved to the floating dock, known as the Tarifa Primero. The floating dock provided the platform for transporting the caissons from the construction site to the water. The caissons were towed from the floating dock to the mooring point in the port, where they awaited their final journey to Aberdeen. During the transportation process, specialized equipment was used to ensure the caissons were safely secured to the floating dock. L-shaped structures were welded to the platform of the Blue Marlin, the vessel responsible for transporting the caissons. The securement process was vital to prevent any movement during the long voyage. Before the caissons could be transported, the platform holding them was carefully immersed into the water. This operation was carried out at a speed of 1 meter per hour, ensuring that the immersion was done gradually and safely. The precision of this process was critical to prevent damage to the caissons or the platform. Once the caissons were fully immersed, the Blue Marlin set sail for Aberdeen. The journey covered a distance of approximately 2,000 kilometers at a cruising speed of 13 knots. Given the massive size of the caissons and the complexity of the operation, 